And let's talk about who's behind this. Um, the people that are involved behind this, and you know as well as I do that, usually when I invest in a, a crypto uh, currency, um, I usually invest mostly in the people that's involved first. Before anything else, I want to make sure that the people that's involved, um, I have several criteria. You know, they are experienced people in the field. And number two, they are people that, are, that have integrity that you can trust, right? Uh, you don't have to trust the blockchain or the public ledger, but do you do have to trust the people that you're giving the money to to make sure that they follow through? Now, whether or not they become, whether or not the project is successful or not is not so important to me. What's important is that the people that are, that are taking my money, that they will actually follow through and do what they say they will do. And if the project fails after that, then I can live with that. The only thing that, that, that I don't want to happen is that they take my money and just run off. That's my main concern, okay? So the three guys that's on their website that's in charge or the, the, the main guys, right? Um, let me just click on here and I'll go over through each one of the, these guys. So if you click on their team, uh, they call it the all-star team. And guys, I'm probably gonna mispronounce all these names, so be aware of that. Um, the first guy is the founder and the CEO. There's three founders of Slocket, and um, the founder is Simon Jench. Is that, am I saying that correct? Jonch, okay. So my security guy in the background here says that it's uh, Jonch, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, then there's a Christoph Jonch, now, I don't know if they are brothers or cousins or father and son or what relationship they have. They do not list on the website. Maybe they just happen to have the same last name, okay? And then, um, so those are the guys. Uh, one guy is the CEO. The other guy is the chief technology officer. And then we have Stephen Tall, or is it Tool? Is that, am I saying that correct? Tool? To all? Who cares? It's Stephen Tall, Tool, something, okay? He's not a tool though, okay? Uh, he's actually a sharp dude. He's actually one of the original guys that's involved in the Ethereum team when they did their uh, pre-sale and their ICO. So, matter of fact, all these guys were involved in the original Ethereum stuff um, when they first got started and they raised all that money. And then that's um, before they had the uh, uh, personnel change and the staff change, okay? So these guys are very familiar with the Ethereum blockchain. They're very familiar with the technology and they help you know, create part of that. So that's the reason why uh, um, I have some good faith in these guys that, and, and they, that they have an idea of what they're doing. You know, it's not some Asian dude like me that's not good in math and science trying to do this stuff, okay? These are guys that are good at it from the very beginning. Okay, and then they have a few other guys like uh, Left Terrace, Keras Petsats. I don't know what these guys' names are, but and then there's Griff Green, and these guys are helping out. But those are not the major players that's making me decide to invest in it. I want you guys to understand that. Okay, the the, the three guys that I'm looking at is Simon Jonch and Christoph Jonch and Stephen uh, Tool. Okay. Nice. And then also on their board of advisors, they have two people that is worth noting. Um, one is a dude named uh, Gavin Wood. Okay, uh, they call him Dr. Gavin Wood. And so he's actually one of the guys that was brought on, right, um, onto the Ethereum team. And he was the one that was cleaning house. He was the one that gave a lot of the Ethereum investors more confidence that the Ethereum project will actually succeed because before he came on board to the Ethereum team, there was a huge mess at um, the Ethereum team, okay? Uh, because Vitalik might be a Vitalik Buterin, who is the uh, originator and the founder of uh, Ethereum. He might be a child genius when it comes to this Ethereum and this cryptocurrency project, but he is too young and inexperienced to deal with people and look at the business and side of Ethereum. So they brought on Dr. Gavin Wood, and he was the, can he was the one who came in and threw out all the people that would not, I would not say that were incompetent, but they were just not the right members of the team 
for, um, for uh, the Ethereum project. So he is one of the members on the board of advisors. And the other one they have listed is Dr. Christian Wright Weibner or man, these European guys got names I've never seen before, guys. So if I mispronounce it, you know, you guys will have to uh, work with me on that. OK, I can barely speak English straight and I'm trying to figure out all these guys last names. OK, but anyway, um, Christian is the main developer of the Ethereum smart contract programming language called Solidity. Right. So there's different. <laughs> I'm cracking up, guys, because James is over here with a camera in my face doing a, uh, what do you call that? A documentary. A documentary video here. <laughs> a behind-the-scenes video, so it's cracking me up. He's got this camera right in my face. You guys don't see it, okay? But, okay, so anyway, back to this, okay? So those are the, 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 the three main people that, the five main people. I'm saying three, and I got four fingers up and stuff, but... The three main characters that are involved, the founders of the SLOC, and then we got the two board of advisors who are deeply rooted inside the Ethereum project. Now, here's the thing, guys. Here's the good news, okay? When you got somebody like Dr. Gavin Wood and Dr. Christian uh, Wright-Weibner uh, as their board of advisors, they are helping to make sure the Ethereum project succeeds. Meanwhile, it is also beneficial to them to make sure that the Slock project succeeds as well because if it succeeds on top of their Ethereum blockchain, then that's more publicity, more marketing, and more revenues for them. So it's a win-win it's a situation, okay? That's, you guys got to look at that, you know? If, 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 imagine that you are the ones coming out with Slock and your, your buddies are the inside people on the Ethereum blockchain. So more than likely, there's going to be some favoritism, in my opinion. I'm just looking at this from the streets, guys, because, you know, you guys know, know that I grew up on the streets. I didn't, you know, uh, graduate from MIT and all, like, like all these guys listening behind this camera to me, you know. So them guys are smart. I'm not, okay. So I just look at it from the street, you know, uh, uh, sense that, you know what, if my homies are on the inside of Ethereum, and I have problems with Slock that I need to make a few changes or something to, to the, the blockchain or something, more than likely, I'm going to be able to get it into their ears, into the developers' ears, just because my homeboys are inside the Ethereum team, okay? So does that help uh, with the personnel that's involved with the Slock project? Very well spoken. Awesome. <laughs> Any comments uh, or questions about that? No, no. Um, 